I have come to the fame and inevitable conclusion that I, Ikenga Imo Ugochi Jerika won House of Representative member elect for the good people of Ida Turnout and South Federal Constituency, Imo State, former senior advisor to the Senate President and spokesperson for the biggest opposition coalition in Nigeria, CUPP, shall be supporting Honorable Tajuddin Abbas for the position of Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives and Honorable Benjamin Okezie Kahlo as Deputy Speaker. Decision easily. Neither did I reach it in support of the zoning formula by the APC. I would have ordinarily been in the forefront of opposition to it. However, if they had not chosen Tajuddin Abbas, I would have chosen him and supported him. Same for Benjamin Kahlo. Sincerely, I have chosen TJ and Carlo, and when coincidentally the APC announced them as the choice of the party, I was in a dilemma and I was tempted to move my support away. But on further reflection, I came to the conclusion that abandoning TJ Abbas for the fact that APC also chose him would have amounted to playing politics with competence, capacity, and character. I advised myself, and I'm happy I did. This is the time for national development, inclusiveness, growth, stability, and not the time for party politics. As a matter of fact, on 7th of May 2023, in this same hall, during the Southeast Caucus meeting, before the APC zoning list came out, I moved the motion for the adoption of Benjamin Carlo as the consensus candidate of Southeast lawmakers for the post of Deputy Speaker because of his competence and capacity. Again, I have made similar assessment, and I'm, I am to say to my colleagues that Honorable Tajuddin Abbas and Honorable Benjamin Carlo are the best men for the job at this time. But many will ask Ikenga, why did I choose Honorable Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Carlo? So I shall defend my people fearlessly without fear of evil. For the last 16 uninterrupted, uninterrupted years, the Senate presidency of the country has been with our brothers in the north. If for any reason, any person that is planning on opposing against the choice of Gosui Lakpabio, then the person can choose from any of the southern senators, like Oji Kahlo, like Oji Tizina, so who the man uh, that, uh, I don't like is, uh, who opposes the man, is supporting, Patrick Indubeze, who are all ranking senators from the south. So if you say this is not good, and you're a man of justice, and you're fighting for national integration and cohesion, you choose from the other one, not to move it entirely, and then want to have all sections of the country holding those key positions. Also, it should be noted that the South South has not occupied the seat of either Senate President or Speaker since return to democracy for 24 years, despite the environment, despite that the environment is being destroyed daily so that we can eat. If they are denied the opportunity now, and both seats taken back to the north, one can ask, where is our sense of equity, fairness, and justice as a country? A Senate presidency from the south will bring about both religious and regional stability. We must not gloss over the fact that the president-elect and his vice are already Muslims. Now, if you do not go by this zoning formula, or don't bring an option that brings cohesion and inclusiveness. When you are done with what you are doing, you will not end up having Muslim president, Muslim vice president, Muslim senate president, Muslim speaker, Muslim CJN. Is that fair? Taking both the senate president and speaker to the north will invariably mean that the top five position in the order of succession in the country will be Muslims. That is clearly not the intent of the constitution when it talks about federal character and also not in line with the desire and aspiration of our nation's founding fathers, who envisioned a, a country where everyone will have a sense of belonging. This trajectory will cause more exclusion and alienation of majority of Christian South and may not go well for stability and unity. If those who are driving this current opposition to the zoning formula are not being selfish, they would have considered all the zones of the country in making their selection. As it stands for them, the Southeast and the South South do not deserve anything. They act like they act like they have forgotten that from 2015 to 2019, while we had a Northern president 
We also had a Northern Senate President and Northern Speaker. But they now thought balancing as their reason for insisting both presiding officers of the National Assembly should go to the North. It is obvious these people do not mean well for our country and do not think of stability. It cannot be said that the reason for what these opponents of inclusiveness and stability of the country are doing is because they went for competence. If they say Akpabio is not competent, then the question would be, why not choose Ojikalo? Why not choose Isnaso? Why not choose Patrick Indubezo? Do they also lack uh, competence? How do they want some of us to go home and explain to our people that we voted for the Senate President and Speakership to be returned to the North, both seats they have had for 16 years since 1999? Since majority of lawmakers in the year to be inaugurated 10th House has chosen a very competent person in the person of Tajuji Nabaz from the North and Benjamin Carlo from the South East. It will be in it would be best if the Senate presidency goes to the South, especially South South. Strangely, the government got it right, and those within the ruling party stoking the embers of disunity and hoping to enjoy the support of the opposition lawmakers got it wrong. It is on this note that I call on my fellow colleague members elect, who are still in the race for speakership and deputy speakership, to stop and join the prefect of the class, Honorable Tajudin Abbas, and his deputy, Benjamin Carlo, to steer the ship of the 10th Assembly to be the records of the other houses in performance and achievement for Nigeria. The reason I say this is because the opposition party members vote, who they are relying on for the anticipated opposition that will institute exclusion, is no longer available to them. Our common goal now should be beyond party and partisan politics and totally focus on Nigeria and her greater good. We want the best and, and we are supporting the best. And importantly, that support is based on merit. With Honorable Tajidin Abbas and Benjamin Carlo, I feel the 10th Assembly will be, will be in for robust engagement with the Nigerian people and with the other arms of government, especially the executive arm, for the interest and benefit of the Nigerian people. I had cause to hear about issues about the mode of election and the house rules. Persons raise issues about purported controversy, controversy in the house rule. I am a man that works with facts. I went on a research into the archives of the house. I came to the irrefutable conclusion that the house rules were not doctored, tampered with, or illegally amended. I have had the opportunity to see all the copies of the other papers as well as the votes and proceedings of the House. I even have to go a step further to meet my elder brother and colleague, right on a Julius Hombre, who coordinated the am amendment process as far back as 2019. I will have seen the government printed copies to ascertain that the copies we are given are the authentic House rules and shall be the one which the 10th Assembly will use. The rules were last ordered to be printed on 17 December 2020, and not recently as rumors had it. The amendment are about two and a half years old and we are not amended after 2023 general election. It's very important that I put this in the public domain. Furthermore, the issue of the identity of the house rule to be used for the election is not even in that because it is not a constitutional issue as it has been incorporated into the fifth amendment of the constitution that has already been signed into law by President Mohamed Buhari. By the provision, the rules that will be used to conduct the election will be the rules used by the previous house before its tenure lapses. So whatever you have in place, which is the one printed in 17 December 2020, is what we'll be using on June 13. So there's no controversy about the issue of the house rule. I urge my colleagues to ignore all the tales of tampering with the rules. Those are political stories and are not fact-based. Truth is always truth, and the house rules are intact and authentic. If there have been any sort of forgery, I would have gladly seen it and exposed it. So if the mode of election as contained in the house rule is the reason why these tales of forgery have been told, then I wonder. The rules demand that members identify themselves by their names before they vote for their choice candidates. If as a member, one cannot boldly stand and openly vote, I would then have to ask, what is there to be hidden? Members are expected to be bold, to, members are expected to boldly, fearlessly, defend their views, positions, and their constituency at all times despite party affiliation. It is on this note that I declare again that I, Ikenga Imo Ugochinyari, Ika 
representing the good people of either Tonot and South Federal Constituency once sworn in on June 13, will be openly voting the Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu ticket alongside all members of the like minds, also known as the TBK group, and we shall be doing so openly and boldly in line with the House rule. I also urge all my members, all my colleagues, all the members elect of the House to look deeply at the facts, not the sentiment, and unanimously vote on Abu Tajuddin as the Speaker and on Abu Benjamin Okeze Kalo as Deputy Speaker, so that we can get the House to hit the ground running without any hitches. Thank you all, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And let me also thank our colleagues who are here specially.